the Oxen Group Nightly. My name is David Ristow. I'm the host of the Oxen Group Nightly and the president, CEO, and founder of the Oxen Group. We're a uh, financial services firm that offers financial analysis and investment ideas, and we operate through our website, www.theoxengroup.com. Check us out today. Um, the Oxen Group Nightly is um, a daily recap of the market and how we are performing in the market. Um, today we're going to be talking about Tuesday's market wrap-up. We'll be looking at our entry into a new position in Dr. Pepper Snapple. Uh, we'll be talking about our Tesla Motor position, the earnings they had tonight, and what that means moving forward. We'll be looking at a couple new short sales that we got into today, um, as well as some of our other current positions. Um, and we'll be looking at our long-term update on Ford, or talking about our long-term updates on Ford. Um, and then we will also be looking at tomorrow's forecast. So today, uh, the market opened lower, um, down about 40 points, and pretty much traded flat today all throughout the day. Um, the real catalyst for the week open was uh, some weak retail sales that came in. Um, there was only a 0.3% increase in retail sales in January, um, according to the Department of Commerce, which was much lower than the expectations at 0.6. The explanation, explanation for it excuse me, was um, some poor weather, um, higher gasoline prices, um, but overall, it was a real surprising drop in retail sales, especially because they've been so strong um, throughout um, the last few months, and this was uh, quite a drop off for them. And we also saw a large increase in import prices and export prices. Um, and this is, you know, not a huge market maker, but it is a big deal because as we see import prices continue to rise, it basically is signaling that we're seeing inflation occurring in other economies. And that's probably going to cause our own economy to probably suffer some. Um, it's going to help us in the short term with being able to battle, um, you know, that import prices are rising by exporting more things to other countries and then buying more things at home. But in the long term outlook, it means that the rest of the world economy is starting to see a lot of inflation and it will start to impede into America um, over time. So that's actually kind of a negative. Um, and export prices were also rising. So we see that that was also occurring. Also, we had um, some bad news out from Sirius XM Radio today. I'm not a huge market maker, but the company was expected to break even or move into profitability. It was probably the largest earnings story on the day as the company moved into the red instead of into the black as was expected. And that kind of just, you know, everyone's waiting for Sirius XM to figure out how to make, become profitable, and they still haven't been able to do it. So we're still waiting for that to happen. Um, also, we had the New York Stock Exchange and Deutsche Börse. Uh, they completed their merge today, and they're created. They've just created the world's largest financial market company. Um, there's a lot of you know regulations that are going to that are going to occur. Um, what's it going to mean for the market is still to be unveiled. Um, <clears throat> Talked about most of this already. Um, let's get to the chart. So we uh, saw the market open lower um, and dip down after the open. Um, you know, there was a buyback that occurred, we see right here, which was really bullish. And uh, when I saw this buyback occurring, I was thinking, wow, we're going to rally right off this retail sales. We're going to move higher today. Um, but this then kind of died off, and we didn't get that volume that we have in the past, you know, that just has pushed us higher. We were flat throughout the day, and then we saw another drop off in the afternoon. But the positive thing was was the buyback again that occurred, and so the market is really has a nice support line here at twelve two hundred. But I think it, you know we're gonna we see a lot of resistance moving up just because we don't have a lot of buyers left in the market. Um, and you know in discussion with some of uh, my associates and you know with some of the members, we definitely are looking at probably a twelve thousand. Uh, resistance line, so we're probably looking for a, a movement down to there in the near to midterm um, with with resistance at like maybe a, a one, two, three hundred. Um, so let's get into our current position, and then we just got into t to today. We uh, entered Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper Snapple on our um, where we we made a entry mark at eight at thirty three eighty four, um, and this was a major support level that we have seen established over the past six months, which we'll get to in just a second on the chart. But the reason we really like this company is it hit, has that support level that just hit, and it has a lot of things that can are going for it moving forward. Basically, the company is about to um, unveil earnings per share. Um, they're expected to grow twenty points from twenty basis points from zero point four four to zero point six four 
report on Friday, or excuse me, Thursday evening, which will then be um, reflected in the market on Friday. And that strength um, on this down day that it showed today as it moved up off the, you know, it was a small move, only about a half percent move that it moved up from our entry level, at which was in the morning, but it did show strength. And that's a really positive in a down day. And we think that's because of, as you can see, you have this line. We This is a line we've created here. And this is a support line that we've seen happen twice before, back in the middle of September and the middle of October. And these, this is the lowest that the stock has ever dropped in the last six months. If we follow the support line over, we had a real nice rally here and flat trading. And then we've been in this downward channel that broke out here and then is now here. Now, you see the Bollinger Bands that they are... Um, they have separated, okay. So what that means is that there's been a breakout. Now, the next thing is that they're gonna curve and they're going to move back together, okay. And that's going, the only way that, that can happen is if the stock moves back up. And we also see that they have the support line here and look at the last two times this has happened. Boom, moved up, boom, moved up. Uh, we expect something similar to occur moving into earnings and the company's expecting big earnings. Um, you know, it, this is a stock that's really setting up for a nice rally into earnings. And if they have even the slightest bit of great, you know, of of uh, positive news in their earnings, this stock could really take off up to you know the thirty five fifty to thirty six to thirty seven level um, in no time if it broke that thirty five seventy five. Uh, moving average. Um, you know, the, you look at the other technicals. You got the fast stochastics here. The see the K and the D line here is separating. That's a great bullish sign. This is a great time to buy. And you also see the stock bouncing off the thirty level on the RSI. So this stock is just really well set up to make a nice run up from these levels. Another position that we're in right now, uh, or where we have just a 20% left in is a uh, Tesla Motors. Um, and we got into this stock um, last week with hope for movement into earnings. And we were able to exit um, most of the position for a gain before earnings. But we did hold some into after earnings. And, to, and after hours, the company had some pretty positive earnings as I saw. Um, you know, losses increase for the company, but you know, they're in a period of time where they're not going to be profitable. And that's that's known. But what is profit what is exciting about what happened was that they beat revenue estimates by two million dollars. So they're seeing, you know, growth in sales and that's going to be able to allow them to have more cash flow and therefore, you know, open more showrooms, build their name, build, you know, take on less debt, um, which is all positives for the long run. Um, they beat their EPS estimates as, as well with a negative 0 0.47 versus negative 0 0.50. Quarter over quarter, it was lower, a higher loss, but you have to take into account you know, that the company is taking on a larger amount of projects as they're getting closer and closer to the release of this car right here, the Model S, which they announced that it is scheduled to be launched on 2012. They've unveiled it. Um, they have prototypes working, um, and this is this is a, such a great looking car. And it's, and the best thing about it, it's electric. Uh, and with their battery packs, um, currently they believe that these can, cars can go up to 300 miles on one charge. Um, also, was positive. They grew margins. Operating margin went up all the way up to 31 percent. Uh, so I thought that overall the earnings were very positive. The market reacted somewhat positively to it. it took it up about two percent in after hours. Um, but as we talked about last time, but after their earnings, the stock went up tremendously, um, up I think about 40% after earnings last quarter. And so we're pretty excited about what could happen tomorrow after these earnings, um, as they were overall pretty positive and there was a lot of positives that came out of also the conference call. Um, so we just went through two short sales today. We'll look at these real fast. And um, we got into GFIG. Um, we like we got into this one at 541. We like this one because, as you can see, the stock has been it has been losing some ground here. And you know, you might say, well, you know, can it go much lower? Well, yeah, it can. Um, you know, the market has not shown much strength, and so we entered two short sales to sort of hedge some of our buys and sort of allow us to have some some exposure to any more downward movement and if we do have positive movement we've picked two stocks we think that their positive upward movement may be limited um here with gfig we had you know this stock has a great support line here at 529 we don't think it could probably break this line but the company we got at 541 if we can get two percent movement down to 530 where they will get support this will be a great um support line for it 
We're also um, going to uh, Warren Resources Incorporated. Um, this is a short sale that we really liked. Um, you know, we we missed a lot of the short sale, obviously, but you know, but this is a quick scalp that we're looking for maybe two to three percent on. And what you see, the reason we really like this is it had a support line here at around the 550 area, and it broke through that today after a downgrade. Um, and the stock we got into it at 526 didn't really it stayed flat pretty much the rest of the day. But as you can see, the stochastics are really dropping off and they're gonna that they still have a lot of room to move down you see the rsi is just is free falling this stock is in free fall and if we have another red day tomorrow this stock could go to five so we really like the way this is setting up and if it's a green day tomorrow uh this stock probably won't have a huge amount of buying because it's you know not at a real support zone um you know we see the most of the support coming here at five um five five oh five five ten area as its last support line and you know it's at 525 so we're expecting you know not much upward uh, not much of an upper gain off of this um, current downward movement our other current positions we have a uh, half of uh, CSUN that we got out of today for a two percent plus gain um, we're holding this position for for more solar exposure with a target of 475 or higher um, solar stocks have just been on fire as they're moving into their earnings and there's no reason why CSUN should even cool off at all even in, in the market's downward pressure these things are blowing up so we got a, a great exposure there with that stock um, we exited roof today after a month hold at 1.4 percent gain not much but it was great to get out of the stock and take some gains off the table and Finner continues to drop um, you know I think it's gonna get a good support line at eight um, you know this is just one that we've just kind of we have in our portfolio that we just have to continue to watch um, and it, you know we got a we had a you know 30 percent loss in it at one point we've hedged that down to about a you know 10 percent loss um, and it's just you know this was something that we got really burned on some earnings but it should should show some support at eight and we're hoping it can move back over nine within the by the end of the month um, we also had a position in WCO that we got into yesterday and we got stopped out today for a 3% loss. Um, oil continued lower, broke an $85 support level, and that was unfortunate for us. But it was a you know a small loss we got stopped out of, and the way oil is moving right now, it does not seem to show any support at any level. So we're pretty happy about that. So tomorrow's going to be an interesting day. We have um, we've had two losses, days of losses in the market, and we're we're hoping it can rebound. Um, but we're wondering, you know, what will be the catalyst? And but there is so much on the plate for tomorrow, and I think we've got a really good chance of a nice day tomorrow. Um, you know, we've seen some stocks give up some gains, and you know, uh, I think it could be setting up for you know a good a good forty or fifty to sixty point gain on today on the day tomorrow um you know this are we had earnings in the after hours from dell that were just outstanding you know nearly everything improved on that for that company except for revenue um but people were looking that excited by their margin excited by you know their guidance and you know that they you know may be able to really be a leading tech company even though they haven't got any tablet or mobile exposure we also have um, big earnings tomorrow from um, Abercrombie Fitch, Comcast, Dean Foods, Deer. I mean, these are real big names in each of their own sectors and can really move all those sectors. Abercrombie can move the entire retail sector. Comcast can move all telecommunications. Dean Foods is huge for the foods, and Deer is just such a big, you know, play in the industrial goods. So, I mean, there's so many different ways for the market to get really pumped up tomorrow um, and, and yet we still have even more really important economic data coming up tomorrow. we got the core ppi and ppi we've got housing starts building permits industrial production i mean it's going to be a real news you know news worthy day that there's gonna be a lot of news out there and we're hoping that that's just going to be more positive um, we have a lot of positions that we would hope would go up we've got some short sales um, and overall we think that we've positioned ourselves well to profit from each based on however the market's going to do tomorrow. Um, and that's going to wrap us up for today. Visit us at www.theoxengroup.com to learn more about our company. Email us anytime. Uh, call us. We have uh, you know 24 hours a day you can call us. And please be a part of 70% plus accuracy today.